just like every year, every year, the biggest question on your mind right now is, how the heck was Adam's summer, right? How was your summer, Adam? Everybody wants to know, right, how my summer was? Who wants an update real quick on what I did this summer? Thank you. All right. That's great. All right. So I've got a few pictures to show on how my summer was and what the heck I did this summer. So follow me along on this journey. Come along. Should I stand up and walk? No, don't stand up. Just stay right there. All right. So first, what did I do this summer? As always, I hung out a lot with my dogs. There's, there's Patty. For whatever reason, I caught her yawning when I took that picture, but I think it's really funny. So I hung out with Patty, my, one of my dogs, a lot this summer, um, and that was a lot of fun. What else did I do this summer? A really cool thing happened. Um, my wife became Reverend Jones as well this summer, and so we are now Reverend and Reverend Jones, which I don't know. I'm proud of her, and God help us if we have kids that they'll have two reverend parents. That'll be really, really right. I know. Never, ever. Those, those kids are already destined to be messed up. Anyways, also, I met a kangaroo. That was really cool. I showed up to a friend of mine's birthday party, and for his 30th birthday party, he had a petting zoo. And it had a kangaroo. Um, also, a camel was there. It was really, really cool. So, that was awesome. I got to meet a kangaroo, uh, which is the first time for me uh, to meet a kangaroo. Um, I went with some high schoolers on a high school mission trip. That's right. We had a lot of fun on that trip heading to East Tennessee. Uh, in that picture, we were going to go take a hike that morning. It decided it was going to rain on us, and we decided we were going to go for a hike anyways. And so we um, went up to Klingman's Dome, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, we got wet, and it was actually really cold as well. Um, all right, so this is one of the coolest things that's ever happened to anybody in anyone's life. Um, this summer, choir tour headed to Boston, and I got to stand on the field at Fenway Park before the game. All right, thank you for appreciating how awesome that was. A dream of mine since I was a little kid, got to stand out there, and our very own Patsy Wade was on the Jumbotron, which was unreal. So we got to take the entire choir to a game to go see them play against the Blue Jays, which was awesome. I got to go out in the field before, lifelong dream, Sox won, wind dance repeat, it was awesome. Um, what else? Oh yeah. Mason and I got a giant Connect Four board, and we played Connect Four pretty much exclusively for a week. Like, I really don't think that we worked at all for about a week, and we just played Connect Four. Uh, Michelle, you even came to our office one day, and I made you play Connect Four before you left. Like, we had played each other for a couple hours that, that day. It was awesome. How many of you came and played Connect Four with us at some point? That's right. We'll play. Anyway, so we got a giant Connect Four board that was awesome. And then, of course, I can't finish up with showing another picture of my other lovely dog. I got to hang out with Hurley a lot as well. So there's me and Hurley. We had a great summer together. Um, so I wonder, how, uh, how was y'all's summer? It was okay. It was really good? I went to the gym a bunch. Yeah? How many of you, how many of you feel like you were really, really ready for school to start like two weeks ago? How many of you felt really rested and rejuvenated after the summer? This is a great place to start, people. None of us feel rested, none of us feel rejuvenated, but y'all, shh, y'all are starting, shh, hang with me, hang with me, please. You are starting another year together, um, and it's going to be a long year, people. That's, that's what high school is. Um, Y'all are uh, sophomores and juniors and seniors in high school, and those are difficult years. How many of you are already feeling the pressure of applying to colleges and things like that happening, right? <laughs> right? Some of the seniors in the back, for sure. Y'all are feeling those pressures. Shh. Y'all are feeling those pressures. And, and one of the things that we really want is for Sunday nights to be an opportunity for you guys to come together 
to seek Sabbath together and to seek rest together. Um, and, and we do that in this time, both in worship and here, but also in an opportunity for you guys to be um, in, a, in a small group with one another. And so that's why you guys are here tonight. And we know that y'all come a lot of times um, not rested and weary and, and with a lot of things going on in your minds. And so tonight we want to kind of set up what small groups are going to look like for you this year. But before we go there, since I've been talking about myself and, and how my summer's been, um, I kind of have a confession that, that I feel like I need to just be vulnerable in this space. And I hope that you guys will receive me well and understand that this is not a place where we should make fun of each other, especially not your youth minister, okay? I am most definitely still afraid of the dark. I'm 30 years old and I'm afraid of the dark. Anybody else with me that they're still a little bit scared of the dark? Nobody? Okay, thank you, a few of you. All right, as soon as I get home, if my wife isn't home and the house is dark, every light in the house goes on, right? Every light is on. If I leave early in the morning and it's still dark outside, which only happens every once in a while, believe me, I still, it's like from my front door to my truck, I run. You know, like, and if I drop something, I'll get it later. You know, I'm getting in the truck as quick as I can. I open the door, throw it in, and hop in and start it as soon as I can. There's something about being in the darkness that's just a little bit eerie and scary. Um, and even now as a grown person, I can admit that I'm a little bit scared of being in the dark. Um, it's one of the reasons why I leave a flashlight by the back door. If I have to go out in the middle of the night with the dogs, I'm taking a flashlight with me. I want to see what's going on. Is there a question? What's, going on? what's your question? No, yes, I sleep with the lights off. But I will say, moment of honesty, when Carlisle's out of town and it's just me, I leave the TV on. That sucker's staying on all night long. I need that nightlight. What? I, I'll get a nightlight. Okay, all right. This, not more questions. All of us is going to be a nightlight. So, one of the things that's scary, scary about the dark is, shh, it's kind of the unknown thing, right? You can't see necessarily all that's out there, and so it's the unknown that's really scary. Like, what's around that corner, or what's out just beyond my vision? I can't necessarily see it. It's not necessarily that you know what's there, it's that you don't know exactly what is there out there. And so it's a little bit scary. And so there's two things that I have found that help me be less scared of the dark. One is a flashlight because I can shine the light and see what's going on out there, right? If there's something hidden, all of a sudden I can see it. And also, the second thing that makes me feel better, even if they're scared too, is having somebody with me. If somebody else is with me, even if they're scared, I feel that much better. Because like, there's still that odd, like, if it's a crazy person after me, as long as I can run faster than them, I'm okay, right? But having somebody else with you, having a flashlight, having some, a way to shine light into seeing the unknown, or having somebody there with you to comfort you, to know that you're not in it alone, makes things a little bit better. And, and I confess that because I want it to be kind of a lead in to what I want small groups to be for you guys this year. I want you to realize that, that small groups are a place where you're not alone, that there's always somebody there with you, whether it be your leader or your friends. And also, the way we set up small groups is for it to be a, a light that shines into the darkness. That sometimes maybe there's some dark things going on in your lives or some areas that you're really confused about or scared about, but as you shine that light, with this small group, that you don't have to be scared of the unknown that's out there anymore. That together as a group, that you can shine that light there. So this guy named John Wesley, a long time ago, he and his brother um, were, were Christian people, and they were trying to be the best followers of Christ that they could be. And one of the things that happened was they went off to college... Okay, and they went to go study, and just as a lot of times happens to people that go off to colleges, they kind of started to slide in their faith. And, and as that happened, um, uh, 
John's brother, Charles, wrote to, wrote to John one day and just wrote to him and said, I have awoken. And so they began a communication together in which they, they both realized that they weren't going to take their faith for granted anymore. They weren't going to let it slide any longer and that they were going to pursue it constantly and they were going to do it together as a group. And so what they did was, was John went back to where Charles was at college, a, a college in Oxford, and they started doing life together. And they started holding each other accountable for all of the things that they were supposed to be doing as Christian men. And as they started doing that, other people saw what they were doing and they saw that the lives that they were leading were so fruitful and that they were so passionate about it. And other people wanted to have what they had. And so other people started to join this group. And people saw them and they were like, man, they're kind of crazy. And they actually started to mock them and they called them the holy club. They were making fun of them. They said, oh, they're holier than now. They're the holy club. And they, they, they made fun of them even more because they had methods that they always did. And they started calling them Methodists. Because they had these habits and these methods that they always went by. And so they made fun of them and they mocked them. But one of the things that they did that really held them accountable is they would get together as a group and they would ask, you, ask each other 21 questions every day. And these 21 questions, I've read them and I've tried to answer them and they're incredibly hard. They make you examine yourself. They make you examine the life that you're leading and whether you're leading that life for Christ or not. And so what I want us to do, or what we want, to, want small groups to be this year, is an opportunity for you guys to be in accountability and in life groups together. We want it to be an opportunity to realize that the person at your side is there and is not going to leave you, and that you're going to walk through these times uh, together, not alone. And that you have a light to shine into the areas of your lives that maybe feel a little bit dark. And so what we've done is, is we've taken these questions that Wesley wrote. And each week, y'all are going to have a little bit different of a focus. We rewrote 14 of them to apply to teenage lives. And each week, you're going to have an opportunity to examine these questions and to look in your lives and help each other Live a life of following Christ. That maybe people will look at you and make fun of you and mock you, but you know that you're living a life following Christ in a way that maybe others would want that as well. So we pray that as, as you go to small groups tonight, that you all have a time to, to look at these a little bit and to examine those. And believe me, people, um, some of them are easy and some of them are really, really hard. But each week it's going to be a, an opportunity for you to examine truly how is it with your soul? And how is your life really? I'm going to pray for us, and then Shelby and the band are going to come up and, and lead us in a few songs. <coughs> Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this night, uh, for an opportunity to be together once again after a long summer. And God, we pray.